rainforest connection. Deforestation is a global environmental disaster. Half of the world's forests have already been lost. Illegal logging is the biggest cause. Trees can be cut down in tropical forests before the authorities even know it's happening. Topher White first became aware of the problem when he was working with an NGO in Borneo to protect gibbons. The ape's habitat was under threat from illegal logging, but how could it be detected in real time? He came up with the idea of using old cell phones as listening posts. The phones are attached to trees and powered by solar panels. As soon as the sound of chainsaws is heard within a radius of one kilometer, forestry guards are warned by text message. The system worked so well that Topher founded Rainforest Connection to develop the solution worldwide. After successful trials in Cameroon, the ingenious eco-friendly system is being deployed in the Amazon. Yes, it's uh, soon, sooner or later being deployed in the Amazon, you've heard correctly. I'm very pleased to uh, welcome uh, Topher uh, on the, this uh, uh, studio, TV studio. Welcome, Topher. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. And Thanks congrats, coming. because this morning uh, oh, thank you, very much you just have received uh, a prize for, for uh, the Rainforest Connection. Mm -hmm. uh, you're from San Francisco? That's correct, San Francisco, oh. Silicon Valley. Silicon nice Valley. <laughs> Uh, how old are you? Exactly? I'm 33. 33, I'm 33 quite young. And I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Marcello Pimenta, yeah. which uh, you are from Brazil. Yeah. Uh, where do you live exactly in Brazil? In Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. I'm from Sao Paulo. So, um, could you just uh, make a statement about what you do exactly? Uh, what, uh, what, what's your job actually? Uh, I'm a consultant about startups and entrepreneurship. I'm a teacher on ESPM. It's a big school about mm -hmm. management and innovation yeah and I'm so proud to stay here with you uh, we're so proud of uh, uh, actually what what do you think about just to have a, you know uh, can we have a, a reaction about the rainforest uh, a connection project what do you think about that uh, I, I think it's a amazing project because uh, it's very important to us to save the forests mm nowadays. Now in, in Brazil we have a lot of problems nowadays with water, uh, without water. In Sao Paulo we have a big problem and we know that uh, part of this problem are because the trees are dead. You know? The forestation is are a big problem. The, the Brazil is a big, a large country. You, know? you don't have to human people to uh, see what's happened in all forest, you know, all jungle, and this technology, you can recycle material, you could uh, engage the population in the areas yeah. to put this on the trees, it's a, a best answer to this problem. Yeah, it's all about responsibility. Uh, Topher, wh what are the numbers of uh, the project today? What, uh, what, what are the, you know, the rainforest by the numbers oh, today? Oh, sure. So, uh, rain, I mean, rainforest uh, deforestation is, uh, is, is accelerating still. Uh, it's a serious problem. Um, to touch a little bit on the point that you said, uh, it's really, uh, it's the second highest contributor to climate change. Uh, more than all transportation, more than all the cars, planes, ships, uh, trucks, all the transport combined, a deforestation, act, deforestation, act, deforestation actually causes more than all of those put together. Um, and illegal logging is a huge part of that. Uh, and Interpol actually says that between 50 and 90 percent, so up to 90 percent of all the logging that takes place in the rainforest uh, is illegal. Uh, and what's amazing about that is that if it's illegal, there's a mandate to stop it. Mm. And so if you can simply help um, authorities to actually stop deforestation, or in other cases, just private parties stop illegal activity, um, then you can actually take a big chunk uh, out of uh, out of the de out of the climate uh, climate change uh, equation, um, and that's really what um, it's not what we set out to do. We set out to uh, to save a small part of rainforest, uh, but uh, what we found is that uh, each device that we put up in the trees is actually able to protect uh, three square kilometers of forest, uh, and that actually allows us to do the equivalent of taking three thousand cars off the road, um, which is uh, is amazing. It's, it's that some smart smartphone in your in your desk that you're not using anymore can be put to, to such a big use means that um, a problem that we've been hearing about for our entire lives in the United States, and certainly not as close to us as it is mm -hmm. in Brazil, um, 
we can actually have an effect on that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that we're trying to implement uh, with Rainforest Connection. But um, can you tell just uh, the, the story, when, when you get the idea, you, sure. you got the idea, you know, you were in a, in a forest? You were... uh, yeah, well, uh, yes, it definitely of was. Of course. <laughs> I wouldn't know why. So. Uh, yeah, I was in the forest. Um, I was lucky enough to travel to Indonesia. Yeah. I've always loved gibbons, uh, to the, the large ape, the, the loudest animal at the zoo. I've always loved them, but really didn't know much about it. So, um, so I went out to Indonesia um, uh, in 2012 to, uh, to go volunteer at an organization that takes care of them and releases them. Um, and that's what they're supposed to be doing. But they actually have to spend a lot of their time and resources protecting the sanctuary uh, where they actually keep these gibbons um, uh, from deforestation, similar to this that you see on the photo, uh, that's happening around their illegal deforestation. And one day we went walking off into the forest uh, on about five minutes walk from the ranger station uh, where there were three full-time guards. Uh, we stumbled upon uh, somebody who was sawing a tree down, a group of people just sawing a tree down with a chainsaw. Uh, and it was inaudible. It could not be heard uh, from where this ranger station was just five minutes walk away. Uh, and that was when it sort of occurred to me that it was not a feasible solution to mm. ask guards to, to go out into a forest and mm. guard it, uh, but this could be solved with technology because chainsaws have a very distinctive sound uh, that computers can pick out better than people. Um, and at the same time, notice there was pretty good cell phone service in the area, no roads, no, uh, no running water, no, no electricity yeah. at all, but they all had cell phone service. Everyone was on Facebook and surfing the web all day. Uh, and if that's the case, then, uh, then cell phones alone could be responsible for things that people wouldn't have to be. Well, when, when you say a cell phone, is it, are there smartphones or cell yeah. phones under the well, currently, uh, So the Rainforest Connection device is actually uh, a phone in a box. Yeah. Uh, this is a smartphone, but this is actually a very old smartphone. Uh, they come from donations. Uh, but even so, smartphones alone, there's hundreds of millions that are thrown away every year, um, which is to say that they are just basically discarded, uh, and we can put those to use. Uh, we like smartphones a lot because um, yeah. it's such an amazing platform. There's so many sensors inside, uh, and there's so many developers hundreds of millions of developers around the world that we can tap into. Um, and it's important to point out that our project, we're a nonprofit, although it's a Silicon Valley startup, we find that some of the most amazing help um, comes as volunteer help from around the world, from developers that can, that can uh, contribute to the project simply with code. And that's what we're trying to... What uh, were your very first supports uh, on the project exactly? Uh, certainly our very first uh, support were our partners that helped us get out there to test the technology. Mm. Uh, the first funding that we received was actually from crowdfunding. So they uh, didn't think you, you were completely crazy to, you know, with uh, the project just to, you know, to <laughs> hang some cell phones under the trees in the in in, in the Amazon in Indonesia for rest. It's completely crazy. It's uh, 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 I, I, I suppose <laughs> it is, and yet and yet somehow it makes it just a little bit of sense. It makes just enough sense that uh, that that's all you really have to say. Uh, we got a lot of uh, really fantastic verbal support from people because just to say uh, we take old cell phones, put them in trees, listen for the sounds of chainsaws, and send real time alerts. That's enough for people to understand all the pieces, because everyone has an old cell phone in their drawer. Um, and so that's something that, uh, that we had no problem sort of uh, leveraging. But the first financial support came through crowdfunding, through Kickstarter, uh, and we got almost 3,000 people uh, stepped forward to help us fund yeah, uh, our current project in Cameroon yeah. and our next project uh, in Brazil. Um, and so this was, uh, that's the first support that we received, but we mm -hmm. really hope uh, uh, it's not going to be enough for us to protect a lot, so we're hoping yeah. to, to, to find some great financial support and partners going forward. Um, Marcello, we see that recycling is, uh, is uh, the in innovation key in a way on yeah. this project. Uh, and that we should not be cutting edge uh, technology to answer a simple problem. Uh, it's, it's quite a fairly, you know, a solution, a radical solution, but it's, the, it's a kind of solution. And you talk about the Brazil uh, case. Yeah. You have many, many needs, uh, actually, uh, yeah. to, to have, uh, fight uh, in, against. In Sao Paulo, we are living a, a big problem. You know, we have uh, no water in taps. Yeah. You know, we have uh, living one day with water, two days without uh, water. And uh, if you think about some Brazil, it's the uh, most natural and uh, savage country in the world and you don't have more water. No? And for us, uh, is this project is very important because we know the, there are a lot of problems to uh, these situations. No? You have uh, the riverbeds are dead, no? you have deforestation, we have uh, global warming, no? and uh, the recycle 
use of the mobile phones and the smartphones, it's an amazing idea to solve this problem. You know? uh, we have a, a large areas on Amazon. We cannot uh, have uh, rangers or uh, guards and police to uh, solve yeah. this. To, you know? And if you use technology for this, it's a good answer for this problem. Mm. But uh, I just want to to know what uh, are there the the, follow, the volunteers that uh, hang the cell phones uh, on the trees? We're still uh, yeah? in, we're still doing feasibility tests around yeah. the world, so it's still very much uh, an engaged activity. So it's still me going out and putting them in trees, uh, and people from Rainforest Connection that are that are doing that. Um, but we very much hope to get to the point where it can be simplified so much that uh, that they can put them in trees. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly, we do rely upon volunteers on the ground. Uh, to both respond to alerts and to help us figure out uh, the best places for us to install our system. Because it's a big rainforest, um, and if you can really sort of center on some, some problematic areas, you can actually flush out um, uh, destruction in a much larger area. For example, entry roads uh, or other places where people get in and out. And, and if you think about the this uh, answer is good, because immediately when the deforestation is happening, you could do anything. Mm. Nowadays, you can wait for satellite photos, and after the the fluorescence happen, you could do something. And this technology could uh, modify this situation. No, because you can do anything in the same time that the uh, trees are cutting. I think that's a great point. I think for us, that that's what really excites me personally yeah. about this is that we can rely upon infrastructure that already exists, cell phone networks that already exist in the rainforest. Uh, old phones that are donated, old recycled panels, and we can create real-time data that actually allows responsible people to get there before uh, the damage really has been done. Uh, sure, a tree has been cut, and this is a terrible thing, but there, but there are many trees around them, so if you can actually show up uh, within a few minutes or within a few hours to actually stop the activity, yeah. uh, you can get right to the source. And then, on the flip side, the stakes are lower. Um, at the moment, when it's a forensic, uh, forensic exercise to go after illegal logging, at that point, the damage has been done. Somebody has to be punished. Things, uh, the stakes are much higher. And the sooner you can get there, uh, the easier it is to, to defuse the situation, uh, which is what we saw in Indonesia, at least uh, with our pilot testing there and the interventions that we, uh, we were able to help facilitate. So, um, are there some van vandalism? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, is the is the is this destroyed by in a way by the people that yeah, we get that know, question deforest? A lot. We get that question a lot. And to answer your question, no, no one's found them yet that we've seen. Uh, or at least they, if they haven't made it clear that they, that they have. Uh, we put a decent amount of work into trying to make them be able to be hidden amongst the trees. So this device may look very uh, obvious, uh, but in fact the reason for all these panels is that we're able to hide it uh, inside uh, the tree canopy under the leaves. Uh, and then the, the, the light that breaks through can be captured uh, versus uh, in plain sunlight. Uh, the idea there is that they can stay hidden there um, and not actually be detected. It will happen. I'm sure people will find them, take them down. But again, we're, we're talking about one device for every uh, you know, two to three square kilometers of forest, and uh, moving through the forest is uh, is quite difficult sometimes. So, um, vandalism we don't expect to be a big problem, and the cheaper we can make the devices, uh, the better. So, as we say at the beginning of this interview, uh, you want to uh, to uh, to make the project concrete in um, in the Amazon forest. Mm -hmm. uh, can you tell us what uh, what what is the, the next step for you? So because it's quite difficult, you know. Sure, we're, uh, we're just sort of uh, on the tail end of our feasibility testing in Cameroon, Africa. Where we've learned a great deal, and we're going to go straight into testing in, uh, in, um, in northern Brazil, in Pará, with an indigenous group called the Tembe. Uh, they have several thousand square kilometers of forest uh, that's been, um, that's, that's, that is their tribal lands, that the state uh, recognizes that they're tribal lands, but they're under constant threat from, uh, from massive industrial scale legal logging uh, and settling is taking place. Um, their land is literally being stolen from them uh, as they watch. Uh, and it's devolved into violence in many cases uh, over the last few weeks and months. Um, however, uh, do, do, yeah. excuse me. Do you have to deal with the, uh, you know, legacy stuff, uh, things like that? Because it's oh, quite, constantly. You know, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, the the whole. What's really important is that we're just building a tool and we're trying to help facilitate it. But in every single case, every case is different, um, uh, where uh, the local people know what uh, know what's best. And so in our case, it's about building a tool that works for them. Uh, in the case of the Tembe, it's about making sure that they, they know where to go. But we're not the ones, uh, we're not vigilantes. We're just trying to help build tools that allow people to, to protect the land that they want to protect. Hmm. So I think you, 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 you would uh, follow the, the project. Yeah, very, uh, yeah. Oh, we are talking about it. And sure. I 
could support him in Brazil. We have the uh, same uh, teachers and communities mm -hmm. and that uh, could help uh, this project. And uh, the operators of mobile phones too could be a, a good partner oh, you know, because uh, they have a lot of phones that they don't use more. Mm -hmm. you know, and they could help too because the problem of yeah. nature of, of all of yeah. us yeah. No, it's not a, a group yeah. no and this is the the alternative to answer for this problem I these are exciting partnerships for us too yeah very much so because we rely upon the very strong infrastructure similar to the people on the ground we rely yeah. upon the corporate infrastructure of uh, telephone networks uh, and even server networks as well so Oh, it's a, and a new idea because uh, in Brazil we have a lot of investments in satellites and uh, mm -hmm. with planes, with uh, another uh, alternatives, uh, but uh, um, it's not uh, not enough. Not. We it's have not a, enough, a, a, yeah. we need to new technologies and new ideas, creative ideas like this to solve this problem. Mm. We're really excited to expand in Brazil because Brazil is a is a, a very technology oriented culture as well. Yeah. Uh, and it's easy for us in the United States to, to think about ways that we can use technology to uh, to help you know stop deforestation in Brazil. But in fact, there's no expertise really in the United States that doesn't also exist in Brazil. And so we're very excited to to, to work with uh, you know very smart and interested in uh, and innovative people there as well to help yeah. expand our system uh, and, uh, and and improve upon it yeah. uh, using resources that are already there. And we're living a moment that have a lot of startups uh, born in, in Brazil, uh, growing. Yeah. This this is a time that is. Yeah, the, the tech scene in Brazil. Uh, it, it, I was told that it's very very dynamistic and. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you, t and you told me that. Actually, oh, it's exciting. It's Brazil, it's exciting. Uh, and maybe well in, in the future you could use uh, this for. Uh, all biodiversity, no, for sure. uh, identify other plants, birds, and other animals, no. Maybe it's a uh, mm -hmm. we have to to solve the problem of our rivers too, no, with fish and sure. things like that. Mm -hmm. And maybe this technology, is, you know, you discover one thing and you adapt it for another thing and mm -hmm. things like that. No? This project could be, you know. Uh, Applicated to another, another cause. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, in a way, because uh, no, is it? Did, sure. Have you ever, you know, think the problem? Well, um, I mean, I'd, I'd like to think that the idea is not all that original, uh, anyway. I mean, listening, using sound to, to track things such as gunshots in cities is something that's that's uh, that's been used very effectively in the United States uh, and elsewhere. Um, but in our case, what makes what makes I think makes this uh, useful and special is that uh, we're doing it in a place that that is defined by how remote it is. It's a place that's defined by how far away it is from anything that anyone knows or cares about, uh, which is why it's so under threat, uh, the forest, I mean. Um, and so what we're trying to do with this project isn't even just about alerts and detecting legal activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's also about trying to create a connection between these very remote places that we've heard so much about growing up uh, and the people who actually have the influence to make a difference, uh, people in America, people in the cities in Brazil, uh, people in Europe, people around the world, uh, like here in France. So. Um, one of the things we're doing is we're going to be releasing an app over the next uh, few months that allows people to stream the live sounds of the rainforest yep. that are coming from these devices. And it's amazing how many people uh, supported us for that mm -hmm. cause alone because we all, we, we grew up hearing about the rainforest and hearing about saving it, but it's just one of those things that you never do unless it's right there in your pocket. So it's one thing to put smartphones in the forest, yeah. but if you can bring the rainforest to people's smartphones, I think that uh, you have the opportunity to really engage people in a new way. When you say we, uh, how many people are, are Sure, in so there's definitely, uh, I have a fantastic co-founder at Rainforest Connection, Dave Grinnell. His background was mostly in environmental policy. Okay. Um, uh, and he joined, uh, he joined around in 2013. Uh, and then there's a, there's a large group of volunteers, I'd say uh, more than a dozen volunteers, who help us um, not just on the tech scene, uh, but, uh, but um, in, other, in other capacities as well. So uh, we're almost entirely volunteer driven. Um, and that's, that's very lucky because volunteers are great. Uh, it would, as, as we uh, gain more resources, uh, we hope that we can start to uh, expand the team more officially. But at the moment, um, we've been able to get pretty far with just that. I'm I'm not sure you say I believe that uh, same organizations in Brazil could help him. Oh, the, maybe this project uh, could be a decentralized project. You know? In each country, you have another uh, civil organizations could help and implant. You know, how you said, in Brazil it's very large. You mm -hmm. don't uh, find only one organization to go to Manaus, to 
Pará, to Tocantins and Acre, Amapá, it's a, I mean, a lot of states, sure. no? Yeah. Not only one could uh, abrange all areas, no? No, I think that's, that's exactly it. I mean, uh, our entire sort of strategy around going to Brazil is that the really hard work is being done by the indigenous peoples that just want to protect their land. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of indigenous groups there. Uh, and so um, our partner ECOM down there, they certainly have the context to make that possible. And so we really hope that, uh, that uh, we can decentralize this to the point that others can implement yeah. it for us. Because jumping from one brain force to the next is certainly not a scalable solution at the moment for us uh, in terms of staffing. I thank you very, very much, uh, both of all, for uh, for being here with us. Thank you, and I think you have great, you know, uh, great moments and great talks <laughs> to follow uh, just after the, the TV. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you, yeah. Thank Thanks. you, Marcelo. Uh, innovation is uh, is uh, Chile now is in Chile, uh, of course. Uh, with uh, Capo, another innovation that NetExplo has detected uh, this year. Capo, it's right now.